everyone this is professor benjamin and this video is going to kind of walk you through week one of the course so each week i will send out um, a kind of just an introduction to the week and what we will be covering that week and then of course if you have questions or concerns you're more than welcome to reach out to me but i'm really excited um, i hope you enjoy these kind of little just recap or description videos of what we're covering for the week so right here um, under the week is the session description and I'm going to walk you through that in a second but you'll notice right below it is the textbook that we're using it's an open resource textbook and within the within the description it tells you what sections of the chapter um, you're required to read for that for this session okay so sometimes we may actually cover parts of chapter one later in the semester so you'll find what sections of the chapter and which specific chapter you're supposed to read that ties with this session okay um as you can see each session kind of ties with the topic and and that's why you'll have specific readings from different all over um that will help kind of tie to that um topic that we're covering right below that you'll find the introduction powerpoint all of these PowerPoints um, I've created. And um, yes, yeah, some of the stuff has come from previous semesters that I've taught. You might see some, um, some um, images or charts from Pearson, um, but overall they tie to the textbook chapter reading um, and that will help you. The other thing is within the PowerPoints, there's sometimes embedded videos and you wanna watch those because that'll help you understand a concept that we're covering within that specific uh, session. Below that, you'll see there's a TED Talk feedback loops video, and I want you to watch this because it talks about positive and negative feedbacks, and we talk about that within the session. Positive and negative feedbacks are what brings about balance in an ecosystem. And two things to quickly remember about positive and negative feedback loops. Positive feedback loops reinforce the change, okay? And so what happens is, is technically positive feedback loops in terms of the environment or environmental science are actually bad things. Um, and that's because they reinforce the change. They keep that change happening that may be detrimental to the ecosystem. The other negative feedback loops almost change the directional change and try and take it back to the way it was. And within this video, they'll talk about those positive and negative feedback loops. But please remember that in terms of environmental conservation, positive reinforces change but in terms of whether it's good or bad for the environment it's not the best thing um, and I know that's a really difficult concept to understand because of the words positive and negative um, but I want you to take note to that below that is the video on the scientific method and our assignment this week deals with the scientific method so you have a series of worksheets that you need to complete about the scientific method the scientific method is absolutely essential to environmental science it is the key tool to us being able to solve scientific problems, be able to repeat experiments, be able to take out variables and factors, put variable and factors in. And of course today, um, you're learning about this in terms of COVID is that science always changes and we really need those scientific method and those um, kind of factual based peer review journal articles to be able to give us that idea that we can um, replicate an experiment over and over again and have the same results. Also, one thing we need to learn about science is that science leads us to change, meaning that everything that we hypothesize doesn't always come true, and that very well may lead to a new development or even something better. So for a lot of times, specific drugs that we have, we may, have, we may be testing um, and that drug may be in trial for something else to cure one thing, when in reality, we learn that it actually cures something else. Um, and so it's not always a bad thing. Um, and then we have ecosystem services. This is really important. It's a reading article. It talks about the services that ecosystems provide to us. So they provide to us cultural services, provisioning services. They, they provide a bunch of different services to us. And this talks about those services um, that it, they provide. 
Ecological succession is another topic that we cover in this session, and primary and secondary succession are two important terms that we're going to cover this session, and I'll let you read about those. I try and refrain from telling you exactly what things are because I like you to read and learn about them, and then if you have questions, you're more than welcome to ask me about that. Um, sometimes in life, people are telling us our opinions already without us learning the factual basis behind them, so I like for you to learn and understand the concepts, and then if you need clarifying questions, you're more than welcome to ask me. So we'll have our introduction forum post. Remember, all introduction initial posts are due by Wednesday, and then the response post to your fellow classmate is due by Thursday. You want to make sure you take note to that because, again, as I've explained in the home on the video on the home page as well as in the syllabus, that Wednesday deadline doesn't show up on the to-do list in Canvas. So you want to make sure that you have that written or put an alarm on your phone, etc. That the initial part of this forum post while the due date says Friday there is a part of it that's due before that due date and it's always due by Wednesdays 1159 and then you're going to have your scientific um, method assignment and as you can see I've made walkthrough videos to help walk you through what I'm looking for in the assignment and hint hint sometimes I give you some of the answers to the assignment so make sure that you watch these videos they'll help you um, understand my expectations for the assignment what I'm looking for in the answers it's absolutely essential that you watch these videos um, don't try and complete the assignments without watching the videos because you may miss an integral component of the assignment that I'm trying to do or trying to accomplish the last thing is the certification syllabus and everyone has to do this so you have to complete this item to move to week two in the course um, and that is the fact that you've read the syllabus you understand the material in the syllabus because that is sort of our contract together um, and it's while it's it's not a legal contract it is our contract so that you understand the expectations and I've been doing this for a while and I find that a lot of students do not read the syllabus and it's absolutely essential that you've read the syllabus and that you certify that you've read the syllabus so let's just quickly walk through the session description and this is found under every module but it tells you the objective so I really want you to learn what positive and negative feedback loops are um, you'll probably have a question on your midterm about this um, understand the services that ecosystems provide again you'll probably have a question on your midterm about this um, understand the sir um, understand the difference between the terms abiotic and biotic and for some of you who may have taken biology in high school or even if you've been out of high school for a while um, you'll learn what those terms biotic um, biological means living abiotic non-living factors in the ecosystem um, understand that change is essential and inevitable and I know we're learning that firsthand um, in society today change is inevitable and it happens it's not always what we want and as humans we don't like change we like to stay on one mode and in one comfort zone and um, what we don't realize is that ecosystems like to change and they thrive on change and that's where primary and secondary succession comes in which is what happens to an ecosystem out after a volcanic eruption or what happens when an old growth forest turns into a new growth forest right is we don't like that and that's why we don't we're not really a lot of us have a hard time and feel uncomfortable in ecosystems because they're always changing and beach communities are a real great example of this Beach communities hate that the shoreline changes, that the beach changes. So what do they do? They put in um, sea walls and they pump beach, sand to the beaches because they want to keep their beach exactly as it is. The problem is that barrier islands are meant to change, um, but humans don't like that. So there you go. Um, and so understand that primary uh, primary and secondary succession. And then again, we really need to learn the scientific method, the steps of the scientific method, and the scientific method assignment will definitely help you do that. I give you a little blurb here and then I tell you what to do for the week. So this is always a helpful tool for you to have. Um, and a couple things right there. It tells you read OER chapter 
uh, 1, pages 1 through 13. Um, and then it tells you to, do, to read those additional articles and watch those additional podcasts. It tells you that we have to, um, you have to do the PowerPoint. It also gives you the initial post, the response post, the due dates for those, and then the assignments that are due. Um, now, remember, you won't have assignments every week, but the assignments um, are definitely es essential for us to make sure we're meeting all those learning outcomes in the course. So hopefully this overview video for the week will help you. I'm hoping that it doesn't bog you down. Um, and I, I find that a little bit. If I did a video lecture of for the entire session, you may become a little bit bogged down. And I'm hoping just a review of each week will help you kind of understand the main concepts that we're looking for here. Um, and just don't become bogged down in the minute details. Rather think of the overall concepts. Again, if you ever have questions, um, I'm always excited to talk about the environment. Um, make sure you reach out before it becomes a problem. I It's so much easier for me to help you along the way than it is for you to email me on a Sunday night at 10 o'clock um, because sometimes I'm not available. So it's always better to email me during the week, get a handle on things um, before the due dates. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I just want to show one more brief thing, um, and that is the questions um, for this week forum. So you're going to answer one of those. Um, I give you six questions to choose from. We have usually typically 36 students in a class. And the reason that I give you, um, tell, tell you that only six individuals in the class can answer each question is because Number one, I find that cheating becomes inevitable. So if I find that you're copying information from your fellow classmates, that doesn't fly with me. Um, so what happens is, is, you know, some students get in early, they think about their answer, they post it, and then someone logs in on Wednesday at 10 p.m., they read what everyone else wrote, and they develop their answer from that. That's not fair. That's not fair to your fellow classmates. So if I find that happening, um, I will address it with the specific student. If you feel another student has stolen your work from you, meaning you wrote a forum post and then you read exactly what you wrote in someone else's forum, um, that's not factually based, meaning it's not sourced, make sure you come to, you email me and let me know and flag me on that um, because that can be offensive to individuals if you've done a lot of work and someone else hasn't and they stole your work. Plagiarism, okay? Um, so remember, you need to use sources I've given you within the module. So I cannot have you using outside stuff because everyone's not privy to that outside information. And we used to call this trumping the conversation, meaning you're bringing in stuff that I don't even know what that is to a conversation and I can't respond to that. So you need to use sources I've given you. So you'll answer one of these six questions. And remember, if you're the seventh, eighth, or ninth person to answer one of these questions, you can't do that. It's out of play. So that's why if you find one of these uh, questions is really interesting you want to get in early and answer it for me okay so can science alone remove the uncertainty around our knowledge of the ecosystems use what you have in the module to help you answer that question um, if change is inevitable and normal in ecosystems why should we be concerned about changes brought about by humans um, hint, hint, humans can bring about mass destruction very quickly that's why because usually ecosystems can respond back through positive and negative feedback loops, but sometimes when humans get involved, we really throw the ecosystem out of whack and it can't respond. E ecologists often liken the function of ecosystems to that of an organism. In what ways does this comparison make sense and what ways does it not? What important questions remain unanswered in order for us to have a sustainable future? Is the environmental science, is environmental science considered an actual science? Hint, yes, it is. And you can uh, find that answer. Um, how, within the, the PowerPoint, how have, e and the, sorry, the chapter reading, um, how have humans contributed to the creation of simple, simpler ecosystems? And this is a really good question is that we kind of um, monocrops, we plant monocrops, we plant mono plants, meaning we like one plant, we plant only that, but we don't have that um, diversity. Um, biodiversity is huge. And when we chop down a rainforest and plant one type of crop, guess what happens? We lose that biodiversity. So we've made a simpler ecosystem. Okay. That's enough of me talking. I think that's plenty. Um, remember, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And I hope these videos will help you a little bit um, walk you through what we're going to cover each week.